day when I met you. Oh, it felt so splendid. I found it so, so true, like looking into a mirror. I reflected. It goes one by one, two by two, every step of the way. I fill up my shoes, there's a map of your soul, and mosaic of you. If I loved you once, if I called you my friend Or if I called you my lover And our beginning had to come to an end Just know I'll always love you I forgive you, sisters and brothers I forgive myself too of the color still remains the same I'm Caitlin Burdett and this is my first time doing the Ink Rally. Um, I first uh, got introduced at Merge by applying to the pop-up show and I had a piece in there called Observing Emotions and it was a ceramics piece, and I am a ceramicist at heart. But I have done printmaking in college. Uh, I majored in art education, so I've done printmaking, jewelry, but ceramics is definitely my favorite. And this has been a challenge because with ceramics, you can kind of start, and if you mess up, you can demolish it and start over or it's just a little bit more forgiving where this has been <laughs> a little bit more of a struggle because if you make a carving you kind of just have to move on and accept that that's the way it is you can't really add any more wood to it so originally i wanted to just do like a large jackalope uh, my husband's a forester so the idea of having a bunny with antlers is pretty hilarious to me but as I looked into the jackalope, I realized it was part of the fearsome uh, critters. And there's actually 30 fearsome critters. And I have about 10 of them on my piece. Some of them are a fish that has fur, um, a bird that flies backwards, uh, a kind of mountain lion cat that can smash things with its tail. <laughs> I've made a quite, quite a bit of a nightmare for myself instead of just choosing one animal, but I guess I like a challenge and I like to make my life difficult. I actually have been using a Dremel just because I feel like it's been able to help me like fine tune certain details and then I'll come back in and carve away the bigger areas. And um, I am a baker, so I have been getting a lot of cramps at work because I'll be frosting and I've been carving for a month now. And I've kind of started being a little bit more playful with my art. Um, I'm also selling some things at the show, which I've been obsessed with like raccoons eating pizza and just silly things. So my art has kind of transformed into just kind of being silly. So my agenda is just to kind of make people laugh and to 
I don't know, get their their own ideas of what these creatures would look like. But I mean, mainly I'm, my art has gone more towards just fun things and being silly. And I just feel like life's too short, so why not make silly art? Uh, my name's Jesse Peck. Um, this is my first experience actually with Emerge and um, doing actually this large of a scale of print, um, which was pretty interesting. Um, I was invited through the Spokane um, Publishing and Printing, which I recently joined. My medium has primarily been painting, so it's been really fun just to explore what it feels like to create more sort of line-based value in terms of doing something that is exploring a painterly style, I guess, of printmaking. Um, I was a student at Gonzaga and had Mary Farrell as an instructor and have been very influenced by her work, um, which is very representational, figurative, and so um, you'll kind of see that a little bit in my work. Um, I'm doing something that is related to kind of a personal experience of um, having painted a lot of nests when I had young children. Um, and I owned a gallery here in Spokane and um, did a whole series of them right after I had my second son, who I just dropped off to college in uh, Chicago. And so I'm kind of like exploring myself in the nest because what does it mean to be an empty nester? My kids are both you know, away now. One lives in Los Angeles, the other one in Chicago. And so I'm kind of like redeveloping this idea of um, like mothering and how is it that you sort of put yourself in the center. It's just kind of a typical sort of mom thing, but it's it's pretty intense um, to experience that, um, especially um, in the context of a COVID year. I didn't approach it like um, in a way that was about um, maybe what goes bump in the night um, so much as um, I had thought about sort of including a heart in there. It's, it's more, I saw it more about sort of the lonely hours, right? Those those times between sort of when the sun sets and when you wake up in the morning, um, it's kind of the quietest time. And, and it's, I saw it as kind of like what goes bump in the night in the context of the whole last year, which has been a lot of, you know, aloneness. And so that's, that's kind of what that represented, especially as somebody who's new, new to an area and, um, and is, feels pretty like isolated and alone. So what goes bump in the night is just my sad, sad heart, <laughs> which is, I, uh, I wish it was like a funnier, more interesting kind of approach, but I guess my heart. Well, I'm kind of a multimedia artist. Uh, my primary medium is language, poetry. Um, so I'm a writer first and foremost. Uh, for the last six years, I've been a letterpress printmaker. Um, and this year, um, kind of took the plunge and added relief carving to it. Um, so kind of, um, you know, anything about putting ink on paper uh, is kind of what uh, I'm interested in. Um, so whether that's with type and typography or whether that's with image blocks or carved blocks, linoleum, um, wood block printing, uh, just kind of mixing it all up and seeing what happens. I love printmaking because it's really, so much more about the process than the product. You spend hours and hours locking up type or carving a block, um, and then you spend 30 seconds printing it. And of course it takes longer because you're making multiple prints, um, but, but really it's about the, the process that gets you to the thing, um, more so than it is about the thing. And I'm, I really love that process of, um, you know, selecting the inks and applying the inks and selecting your type and uh, picking your paper. The, the artist is so involved in every single aspect of the process um, that you really, you really get kind of full control. If anything goes wrong, it's, it's, it's totally your fault. Um, but because it's so process-based, you can work with that and make any mistakes part of the process. I first participated in the Ink Rally a couple of years ago as a vendor. Um, with Spokane Print and Publishing Center, um, just selling prints um, at a booth, um, and saw these steamrollers going over these wood blocks and was like, that is amazing. <laughs> um, and signed up for one a couple of years later and just was so intimidated by the process I couldn't pull it off. Um, but this year, um, Ronaldo and Ashley, um, Jesse, other people at our shop were all doing it, so I was like, okay, I'm doing it. Um, and it's been, it's, it's been challenging and 
great and a really fun learning process. So I'm glad I finally took the plunge. I'm, you know, a, a book designer and a typographer and a letterpress printer. Um, so I took the theme very typographically and made the word monsters. The theme was things that go bump in the night. Um, uh, and so I thought of monsters and that might have been a word in the prompt. Uh, and so I spelled out the word monsters in monsters. Um, so I drew and had my daughter draw some of um, the letters as, as different monster shapes uh, and carved those. Um, and then added kind of a spoopy tentacular border um, around the edge. Um, and, uh, and yeah, just kind of heading into the fall, wanted a uh, kind of a fun, goofy, whimsical sort of take on things that go bump in the night. So I ended up with uh, Monsters Inc. I-N-K um, to kind of get the dad joke in there. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. It's not, you know, high art like um, Ronaldo or Ashley or Jesse or some of the other printers that'll be there, but it's, it's fun. Um, it's typographical, which I really wanted to do. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. My name's Taryn Weirk. I'm an artist from Rathrum, Idaho. Um, my piece is called Consumption. This is not only my first time actually being in the Ink Rally event, but my first ever actual relief printmaking. So a lot of the process has been kind of me shooting from the hip, uh, technique-wise. A lot of my background is, I'd say, very small scale and with like traditional dip pens. And so moving on to something that's much, much more large scale and kind of the opposite, relieving the negative space has been kind of a big learning experience. So as for the inspiration for it, fundamentally, like I kind of had, had an idea to do the uh, something on the three wise monkeys, like the hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. But instead of monkeys, I kind of took an approach inspired by uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, which is one of my favorite movies ever, as well as uh, The Blob. I just really, really like creatures that are kind of formless, shapeless, and just a lot of appendages and weird stuff like that. Initially, a lot of the kind of struggles I was going through was with a lot of the actual technique of using the relief, or the, the tools. Um, I kind of went initially this brute force kind of not very dexterous way of going about it where I kind of just gouged with one hand and kind of messed up my wrist and the palm of my hand and in the morning after my shoulder too so it's that's been kind of an experience trying to find the best way to kind of do it efficiently so I think a lot of my stuff typically is pretty abstract um, which is kind of on purpose. I like to have an underlying theme, something that you can kind of hold on to, but at the same time being vague enough to where the viewer can kind of form their own conclusions based on their own experience on what it could mean, I suppose. So I guess as far as what I hope people get out of looking at it is kind of just whatever they see fit to take from it. Um, that's kind of just how I approach everything that I make. My name is Ashley Vaughn. I am sort of a jack of all trades, master of none. I like dabbling around um, in different art mediums, which I think uh, is why printmaking is sort of appealing because it has a lot of different techniques and ways of approaching it. But outside of that too, I really like painting. I like playing with digital video, all of that. I, I love, like, I think most people don't think of printmaking as being an intuitive act, but for me, I approach it pretty intuitively. So that's kind of fun. I get to be surprised by it and make discoveries all the time, just based on the technique that I'm doing. But it got involved with Ink Rally and printmaking in general, just because my husband, Ronaldo, I just remember like watching him in his studio carving and thinking like how cool that was because I've, I've tried doing printmaking before in the past and it just felt way too process oriented but seeing somebody um, 
actually doing the carving, I could kind of piece it together in my head a little bit. So I decided to go with a sphinx, yeah. which to me has always been like a very interesting and mysterious kind of creature that is around, but we don't hear too much about it. So I don't know, I just wanted to explore that and the themes that uh, come along with that a little bit in my piece. I'm Susan Weber. This will be my fourth year doing the Emerge Print Rally, Ink Rally. And um, yeah, I love doing it. It's one of my very favorite events. I'm excited that I've been able to be part of it for four years, well, this time being four. And my first year was, um, I didn't know anything about carving, had done some lino cuts, but never really tackled something this large. So I, I really just kind of went for this very loose, hacked away type of feel, which was really therapeutic. I was undergoing chemo at the time, and uh, I just really enjoyed the cathartic way that I kind of attacked the board and did really loose lines. And then the next year I tightened it up a bit and did something a little bit more complex. And then I feel like each year it just kind of develops a bit more. Crazy enough, I didn't even really know anything, didn't watch any YouTube videos or pay attention to how to carve. So it wasn't until this year that I asked Ronaldo about how often to sharpen tools. I was like, I think my tools need sharpened. And he was like, yeah, like every half an hour. And I was like, oh, not two years. I <laughs> made my life a lot easier to realize, yes, sharp tools work good. So um, I love that there's always a theme and that's a good jumping point as an artist to be able to look at something and say, oh, okay, that gives me good ideas. Um, I went with a Korean mythology theme for my background and uh, I went with kind of a mix of a few different things that I pulled together and made it one image. It's got like a virgin ghost story along with a dragon dog, foo dog kind of thing that I, I made up, uh, have her writing it, which isn't really part of any mythology I'd read, but just kind of piece these things together to make up my own story. Last year was was so different without a crowd and without the booths and without the people. It had <clears throat> it was still super fun. I love the the activity of watching the the prints, the reveal, but it's always more exciting when you have people here and Coeur d'Alene kind of goes all out and I love that we have music and it's it's a very fun vibe. So, I hope that people will look at my piece and and wonder about it. I don't like to give up so much that it's just like, oh, that's obviously the story. I kind of want you to look at it and think about it and come up with your own idea. Like maybe it just sparks some sort of dreamlike feel that you're like, what's going on here? And, and you question it immediately. Like, why are her eyes gouged out? But <laughs> it's kind of creepy in that way, but it's also really beautiful. And, and I just hope that at least you look at it and maybe feel something, whatever it might be. I'm a mixed media artist, so I do a lot of different mediums. I do, um, I mostly work on like random scraps of wood that I find, and I layer acrylic paint and collage and paper and ink pen and miscellaneous things that I find, like receipts or scraps of paper I've doodled on or things I find laying around the street. I really like to encompass scraps of my life into my artwork, so it's very personal and eclectic feeling. I really like the process because I feel like it, what if since I work mostly with ink pen and drawing and painting, it's challenging me to work with the medium in a new way and see what the medium wants me to express and how I can express an idea in a different way. And so I'm finding ways to help my idea come through in a way that like the print wants it to be shown versus like seeing my art as just a drawing and then making it into a drawing. I'm learning how to like work with it and like, oh, I can do more organic shapes here or I can carve something here and that feels better for this means of expression than what I normally do. And it's very fun. 
I usually listen to music when I do art, when I draw or paint, but during this project it takes a lot of concentration so I've noticed I haven't really been listening to music while I've been working. I find that I really get in the flow when I'm just listening to the sound of me carving on the block and that's a very meditative thing and I want to participate because I really wanted to push myself to complete a bigger project than things I normally work on. It really helps me to have a concrete deadline and to have an event that I'm working toward and I wanted to see, I, I guess part of it is proving to myself that I can complete bigger projects and progress as an artist and it feels like I'm expanding my skills artistically to be able to be part of this project and also I really appreciate the sense of community I think is built around this event and the fact that we all get together to print our blocks and share our process and see each other's artworks and just to know there's other people working on the same project and you can reach out to them is a really cool experience. Um, for this year's theme I chose an urban legend and the urban legend I chose to illustrate was that of Robert Johnson, the Delta Blues guitar player. I was always really drawn to his story because it's, it's a very famous story. I mean, if you're into music or rock music or blues, like it's very infamous and it's also very mysterious and no one for sure knows what his life was like or what his story was like. But the, how the tale goes is that he went to these crossroads in rural Mississippi in the middle of the night and the devil supposedly tuned his guitar and gave it back to him and before that moment he was not a very great musician <laughs> and musicians at all the halls would complain about how poorly he played but after that moment when he sold his soul to the devil he could play guitar and sing blues very well and he's been a really big influence on modern music so I really wanted to pay homage to this musician and all the groundwork that he laid for future musicians and also myself being a musician um, and to bring more awareness to all the people that have come before us that have allowed us to express in the ways that we do because of the work that they have done. And I, I just think it's a very, very interesting, very interesting magical story. I'm Tom White. Um, this is my first ink rally. Um, I didn't really know exactly what to expect. Uh, and just like everything else, I procrastinated and was up till 4 a.m. on Thursday and 5 a.m. this morning. Um, but yeah, I have a background in like prop making, sculpture. Uh, I do furniture and home decor is my home business. I've never really considered myself an artist or anything. I just like making stuff and, and creating. Um, but I'm starting to embrace that more these days. Uh, so yeah, it was, a, it was a fun experience. So I haven't named my piece yet. When they told me that the theme was things that go bump in the night, I'm a huge sci-fi fan, horror fan, HP Love, Lovecraft. So like Cthulhu is my centerpiece of it which was daunting because I suck at tentacles. Like, they're worse than hands for me. <laughs> I assumed that the process was gonna go quicker than it did, which is why, yeah, I spent a couple really late nights <laughs> recently um, and went through a bunch of Dremel bits, burn them up and, um, yeah, but I learned a lot. I've always been into like lowbrow art, you know, so. I just want people to enjoy it and think it's a fun piece and think it's interesting and have a lot to look at. I'm Abby Henning and I live in Dalton Gardens. Um, I am involved in the Ink Rally this year. This is my second year. Um, my first was 2017, which I believe was the first year. Um, 
So I'm pretty excited. So you can see my um, my studio is my happy place, and it's my studio is kind of wherever I am. Um, my husband and I have started traveling quite a bit. We've kind of adopted the snowboarding idea. I was a little apprehensive about the the theme for this year, about being about monsters and all that, and wasn't quite connecting. And then um, I kind of started playing some my own interpretation and was like, what am I thinking? I have these beautiful, glorious monsters in my backyard and they are our planet saviors. And so that's kind of how my, um, my where my inspiration came from. Um, I am a beekeeper and a sunflower grower. And both of those two things are crucial to our planet and they're crucial in my life. And so um, the theme and the title of mine is Glorious Saviors. My entire garden is basically planted to save the bees. So you've got my, my bees there and my sunflowers, most of which are 12 feet tall. And it's hard to really, when you look at them, you don't realize how tall they are until somebody actually stands next to them. But they, um, they're pretty amazing. So I started with this big, these two sunflowers who just are humble. And, um, you know, they're, they're just, their strength is, is evident in their size and their boldness. And I just saw their leaves as these just arms that were just, um, you know, kind of showing their muscles and their, um, holding up the bees. And so I really wanted to focus on the sunflowers and these two sunflowers in particular, which were just so nurturing to the bees. And so I kind of, everything kind of wrapped around these two sunflower faces and then the bees kind of just kind of placing them on, on the petals and on the, the hands um, was kind of where I jumped off of, of my design. Everybody knows, they hear about it all the time, save the bees. Um, it is a thing and it is really, truly um, crucial to all of our well-being. You know, it's, it's creating the food that we eat, it's filling, it's, it's everything. And, you know, if, if we can each do our part um, by planting sunflowers um, or any other flower that, you know, inspires you, it's crucial to keeping our bees alive. We're fortunate in Idaho to have so much land around us and so much for bees to forage from, but on the flip side of that, there's always somebody spraying something that puts our bees in danger. And I just encourage everyone to just plant something. Just get out there. If you need some seeds, call me. I've got lots of seeds. I'd be happy to spread the seeds with you, um, but it's just, it's so important to, you know, keep these, these creatures alive and um, they're here to keep us alive, so let's keep them alive and grow many, many glorious saviors. Uh, my name is Sarah Windish. I am a first timer at the Ink Print Rally. I finally got brave enough to submit. Um, I've attended a lot of years, but um, putting a piece in was a kind of a big step for me. I have uh, done a lot of printmaking, but uh, a large scale print was kind of a big, big step, but I'm really, really glad that I did it. It uh, was really fun and I, learned so much, so, so much doing it. Um, my piece is the <laughs> Madonna and Child as Sasquatch and Batboy from Weekly World News. Um, 
And it's, I called it the divine conspiracy, but it's based on a stained glass window. Um, I really enjoy stained glass. I think it's beautiful. Um, and I saw a lot of opportunities to combine my love of textiles with the uh, printmaking because I really enjoy putting those two together. I spent about three eight hour days actually carving it. Working large scale like that, I was, I did not anticipate quite how much my old bones would hurt. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and also quite how large my pile of sawdust would be. Quite frankly, I had, um, you know, like eight inches of sawdust <laughs> by the time I was done. I am a big fan of cryptids and cryptozoology and things that go bump in the night. And uh, I just really thought that the idea of taking something mythological and adding it to something that which to uh, many people is not necessarily considered mythology would be really fascinating because I think to a lot of people, um, Bigfoot and religion are on you know equal footing. And so I really kind of wanted to explore that in a tongue and cheek way. I'm sure that, you know, it might, you know, be a little blasphemous to some, but I, uh, you know, if art makes you think, that's, it's doing its job, right? Um, I, of the list of all the things that I am, artist is close to last. Um, I'm a business owner, uh, have three small kids, uh, do volunteering for things throughout the city, but when I have time, I love to play around with art. Everything I've always done has been self-taught and most of the time I don't really know what I'm doing and then I try to figure it out along the way and it's a way for me to unwind and relax and just put my mind onto something else other than all the stresses of life. I love printmaking because of Emerge. Uh, I've been part of Emerge since pretty much the beginning, supported every event they've ever done and then I joined the board and I was there for every single ink print rally and it was just such an amazing event. And I was so inspired by all the artists who did this so incredibly. So for, I think, probably two years, I said, I'm gonna do it next year. I'm gonna do it next year. And then I didn't. So last year was my first time. And I just, I really did fall in love with the process. I mean, if you're gonna start printmaking, why not start with a four foot by five foot panel and a steamroller? Um, and I've just, I mean, I'm sure there are things I don't know about it that I could definitely learn, techniques that I could learn, but for me right now, it's kind of fun just playing around and seeing what I come up with. It's funny is because when I wasn't an artist, I always ran uh, the bar. I was always pouring beer for everybody. And I love that part because that's my actual job anyway, is serving people alcohol. So for me, just watching it over the years, standing at the beer garden and then being a part of it just seemed like a natural progression. Oh man. This year's theme is beyond perfect for me. I love everything horror, I love monsters, I love it all. So it was actually harder for me to narrow down my options than actually pick one because I had I could do, I could have done 10 panels for you know things that go bump in the night. So uh, I finally uh, narrowed it down uh, to what I'm doing. Uh, his name is Hearn the Hunter. He uh, he's a English folklore. He haunts uh, Windsor Forest. And he's actually so old, he was mentioned in a Shakespeare play, Mary Wise of Windsor. Uh, and since then, it's just this, he's supposed to be haunting the woods of Windsor Forest, and he has giant antlers, and he rattles chains, and he scares children, and he makes trees weep. And uh, he, my favorite part is, he scares cows so much that their milk turns to blood. But that was an interesting part of him. But I just wanted something interesting and uh, maybe something that people hadn't heard of before and also something that could potentially be beautiful. I mean, I'm sure there are all sorts of horrific monsters you could create art about, but when it's this big and might be hanging on somebody's wall, you don't necessarily want it to be terrifying. So I thought he was a good uh, mix of beautiful and also mythical and terrifying small children. I mean, what's not to love? My name is Jen Erickson and 
I am primarily a painter, but I also do some printmaking. And I teach, actually teach printmaking at North Idaho College, um, in addition to oil painting and watercolor and drawing. And I really love the challenge that the Ink Rally presents every year. This is my fourth time doing it. Um, I love the challenge of having an assignment um, where I have to follow a theme and create something a little bit out of the realm of what I normally would do. So for the, I, the theme of monsters, um, it took me a while to come up with an idea and I ultimately settled on the giant squid because it's something that's been, it, it is an urban legend, it is a legend that's been in um, stories for hundreds of years and um, this kind of unseen monster and it wasn't until actually 2004 that we finally got the first photograph of a giant squid and then 2006 somebody actually filmed it um, and so it was this kind of urban legend kind of mythical creature until we actually got proof that it existed um, I really enjoyed the process of carving the squid it was um, just a lot of fun to do the process of carving this block went pretty smoothly luckily because I kind of waited to the last minute to get it done. <laughs> I was in Europe for most of the summer and so really had to, really had hoped it went smoothly and was, it was fortunate that it did. I did start out with another idea that I kind of scrapped after a couple days of working through it and then settled on this idea, which I was a lot more excited about. I think the Ink Rally is a really great event uh, to expose people in the community to the art of printmaking. I think it's a really exciting opportunity for people to come together, artists and community members, um, and see the process of printmaking. And I know as an artist, I really enjoy working with other artists at the event to um, just put on this big production and see our prints come to life. I think that's just a really exciting part of the day. My name is Jill McFarlane and um, I have two projects here going on um, at the Ink Print Rally. Um, my first project is a personal project that I am working on. I first got interested in printmaking at Emerge, a class that they offered. It was a wood carving printmaking class. It was the first time I ever did any kind of printmaking. And I just loved it. And I started doing um, printmaking at home and incorporating it into some of my other artwork that I do, which is usually watercolor and um, ink pens. And then I started adding um, the printmaking and embellishing with watercolor and ink pens. And I've even started using charcoal to do some embellishments at home. It's been so fun. And I've always wanted to do the ink rally ever since the very first one. I just kind of dreamed that that would be something I would do. But life circumstances and um, just maybe a little bit of fear <laughs> kept me from getting involved until recently. Um, I just decided finally to do it um, for myself. And then I also am the art director at Sorensen Elementary School. and wanted to have a project where the kids could be involved as well. So I did a summer class because it's in the fall. It was a little bit hard logistically to schedule um, for the kids to be to participate. Um, so I scheduled a summer class and had a group of 12 students come and work together to create kind of a spooky image that went along with the theme. And instead of carving the panel, which I realized very quickly was too difficult for them. Um, I had them take popsicle sticks and cut them and shape them and glue them to the panel. So um, those are the two ways that I'm involved in this year's ink print rally. For my personal print that I did, I chose to do a blindfolded bird, which is actually a chickadee. Um, and that has a lot of really a lot of symbolism for me about kind of willful ignorance, I guess. Um, that idea and concept was kind of birthed out of a reaction to maybe climate change and the political climate that's so intense and overwhelming and just kind of wanting to 
take times to just completely put on a blindfold and not interact and deal with those really heavy, hard um, concepts. I think that that blindfolded bird also symbolizes an element of fear of just being uncertain about what's around us and what's coming and what what's out there and um, just having a, a bit of a fearful feeling and I think that the bird kind of personifies that. For the kids panel it was just sort of a fun approach to uh, creating a spooky image that was approachable for the kids and that they could have fun with and that they could create something that they'd be feeling really successful with. And um, I think we accomplished that. I believe very strongly that shared art experiences have this beautiful ability to break down social barriers. People from all walks of life can come together and have this experience that's beautiful and that's positive and that's moving us together. It's really easy for us to connect with our neighbor next to us. And I just think that we can come um, together over these experiences and that we can um, hopefully overcome some of our differences and divisiveness through that. And especially with kids, with the kids project, you know, in a public elementary school, there's people, parents, families, kids from all walks of life. And um, we can create something together and share it with the public and have a really beautiful shared experience that um, really connects us as a community. My name is Reynaldo, I'm a printmaker and educator. Fall in love with the process of relief printmaking and I have been doing that not only in my personal practice but also in the school where I teach at Gonzaga University. Printmaking is one of those processes that is very rewarding. Mm -hmm. It allows you to make multiples and share those prints with other people but also the process is very engaging and it requires collaboration, as for collaboration. So it makes you work with other people and that's the challenge, but also is what makes things even better. You know, every time that you try something, because we have been using the same technique from the last 400 years. It's just that each one of us can reach in a different way, bringing our own personal experience. I got invited by Jenny Hestek to collaborate in today in Rally. And then since then, we have been able to develop our friendship, but also continue developing this project every year. It's exciting to see more people coming for the first time, not only as viewers, but also as makers. Um, it's great that we offer that support and opportunity for other people to try the large scale printmaking process for the first time, and us uh, pretty much um, helping them to, to print together all these big visual narratives and then later on help to spread the love for pre-making with the rest of the community too. Uh, yeah, so I think the theme today, uh, this year was to play a little bit about monsters, you know, about... Um, so I wanted to do something playful. What I have is a collection of different monsters from Earth, pretty much trying to play poker uh, in a round table, trying to win the Earth back from uh, an alien. So they're just pretty much gathering around the table, um, playing around. Some of them appear to be concerned. Some others are pretty much like very comfortable and very uh, confident, but they don't know exactly what is be, uh, behind the hand of the alien, which actually carries the earth in his head. So I just wanted to make it a little bit playful in that way. Hi, my name is Keely Brennan and I'm the program coordinator at Emergence CDA. I handle class scheduling, corresponding with instructors and artists for art walks and the retail space and just kind of help fine tune a lot of the stuff that we have going on at Emerge. I'm Jenny Hegstead and I am the founder and executive director of Emerge CDA. Um, I developed and launched Emerge almost seven years ago and uh, it's been really an exciting experience to watch Emerge grow and develop and become uh, kind of this hub for arts, culture, and Coeur d'Alene. 
So this year's theme was super fun, and it was things that go bump in the night, monsters, creatures, and urban legends. This year was, um, it was fun to kind of get back to the community-based event where we could invite, again, like I said, the community to come out and view uh, the art and process and have uh, all these great vendors there that were really focused on um, printmaking as well and uh, some fun live music. You know, it was just a really good time. We lucked out with a beautiful day. Um, and it was, it was a lot different than last year when we were really struggling through with COVID and those restrictions. And we just did an artist only printing day, which, um, you know, was unique in its, in its own way and kind of nice to have just the artists together, but it was really great to get back to the community event. It was amazing to see how the artists took something that typically would kind of be the typical monster urban legend type deal and kind of made it their own and really showed their creativity in a bunch of different ways and no print was nearly the same they were all very unique and yeah it was just really fun to see how that went about i'm really really excited about the future of the ink rally and the future of emerge um i see you know great things happening and uh they're just these events that Emerge does are kind of always evolving and getting better each year as does Emerge and its programming. And, you know, it, it makes me excited about where I live and, um, you know, getting to meet and interact with new artists all the time. It was really refreshing and great to see our community members coming together and smiling and seeing the reveals of these large scale prints being made. Um, we really look forward for the years to come and just to continue building an amazing community of artists.